Here at K-Tech, we do a lot of track day prep. And today we're gonna actually show you how we go through the car to make sure you're safe, make sure things are operating properly, and you maximize your time on track. So when we're dealing with fluids, the first one that comes to mind is oil. Now everyone knows we need to change our oil, but as for a track day car, we want to make sure we use the proper viscosity. What we want to use is 1550. 1550 is a heavier weight. It'll allow for a little bit more cushion on the bearings and give you a better protection for extreme use. So on this particular car, this is a C6 uh, with a dry sump, LS9. You're gonna to wanna to get the engine up to operating temperature. Then you're gonna shut the engine off. You're gonna wait between five and 10 minutes to check the oil level. Somewhere in that five to 10 minute interval, we're going to pull the dipstick, we're going to check it, and we're going to see where it is on the stick. It needs to be between here and here in the operating range. If it's very hot, it's going to be, it should be up here near the top. If it's just, just been driven on the street, it's going to be down in this range. We don't want to overfill it. Our next fluid up is brake fluid. Brake fluid is extremely important. The brake fluid that we want to use is a higher temp brake fluid with a higher wet boiling point and also higher dry boiling point temperature. That way when we go screaming into a corner at 140 miles an hour, your brakes are there and not fading and, and the pedals not falling to the floor. As you can see here, there's dot three and dot four. Dot four fluid for the clutch, dot three for the brake. If you're driving at Laguna Seca or Circuit of the Americas, your brake fluid is highly important, just as your brake pads are. Are The heat, heat from it is incredible. Those are the highest braking tracks in North America. Now we're gonna to come to the back of the car. We're gonna check or change the trans ANS fluid. If your car has been used for a year at a number of events, I would recommend changing it. I like to change my trans fluid at least once a year, whether I do two events or 10. I need to change it at least once. So we're gonna be checking the fluid and setting the level right midway up on the case. We're gonna pull this plug out and the fluid's going to either trickle out or be just below the hole. If it's low, we wanna find out why it's low. And coming to the very back of the car, we have our differential. We're gonna check it and see, uh, see that it's at the, the proper level. And again, if we're, we're, we should change this once a year. Uh, if we're doing a lot of events, particularly slow speed uh, now where you're, and, and tight turns, that's where you're really gonna wanna change your differential fluid more because you're really working it. Let's so check the suspension, we're gonna lower the car. One of the main things you wanna look at is the bushings. C5s, 6s, and 7s, the front upper control arm bushings have a huge issue, particularly when you get hard on the brakes, it starts moving this control arm backwards. It'll start pulling these bushings out. Next, we're gonna take a look at the lower control arm bushings. See how, see the condition, make sure they're not dry rotted, split, cracked. Uh, with urethane bushings, we wanna make sure they're still properly lubricated. With monoball bushings, you wanna check for play. You want, on on it to be clean in there because particular and particular with monoball bushings you want, don't want all that dirt getting getting in there wearing the bearing away faster in order to check our front and rear suspension in regards to our tie rod ends and wheel bearings and ball joints for the tie rod ends we're going to grab the tire at nine and three we'll shake it side to side this checks for the tie rod ends both inner and outer. We're going to switch positions to 12 and 6. This is going to check for wheel bearing and ball joints. So if we do have a loose tie rod in, what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves a helper and we're going to have him wiggle back and forth at the 9 and 3 position. And I'm going to grab it and feel where is the play. So we're going to grab it and on the outer tie rod end, which is most likely the, the case of where it's going to be loose. And we're going to feel between the knuckle and the tie rod end to see if we can feel play there. If, if we can't find the play on the outer tie rod, we're going to check it right here at the inner and feel if there's play in this ball. If there's play, we're going to replace it. So to sum it up, 
If you're getting play, we need to replace tie rod ends, either inners or outers. Particularly on the rear, if you have a loose tie rod end, or, or worse yet, you have two or four loose tie rod ends, what you're gonna notice on track is you cannot get to the power soon. You gotta have that car dead straight, and it's, otherwise it's gonna wanna step out from under you. So the next thing we're gonna check is our dampers. We're gonna check to see, are they leaking? Is there anything, if, it, if it's a aftermarket shock and it has a mono ball, we're gonna to wanna to shake it to see that the, the bushings are still good in it. If it's a, a race car shock, like a Moton, a Penske, a JRZ, how many miles does it have on it? How long, when was the last time it was serviced? Typically a professional car would be serviced every year. Um, for a club race car, I would recommend every two to three years. We want to ask ourselves how the car was handling uh, when we last drove it on track. Did it feel loose? Did it feel glued to the road? Was there a problem with it? Was there any weird noises that it made? Is, it, is there something we can improve upon or is it really, really good where we should find out how it ended up there? You know, and, and that's checked by you know, do it, doing a, a proper set down. You know, what is a set down? It's, it's checking your corner wakes, checking your alignment, making sh sure it is what, what it's supposed to be. And like I said, if it's, if it's really good, you wanna know what those numbers are. So now we're talking about brakes. There's a lot of things to brakes. One of our first ones we're gonna check is make sure we have enough thickness on our brake pad. The reason we don't want to use our brake pads completely down to the, the backing plate, uh, beyond you know getting down to the backing plate destroys the rotor, is when you get them down real thin, you don't have enough thermal capacity in the pads. So as you keep going lap after lap, the pads will get hotter and hotter, and then all of a sudden, it's just not going to stop. The next thing we want to look at is to make sure your rotors are good, in good condition. Now this, this car, particular car, it has carbon rotors. One of the things you want to check on a carbon rotor is that it doesn't have any chips in the, the edges here. Now these car, this car particularly has you know, protectors on it so that while I'm working on it, we don't chip up this, this edge here. As far as replacement, they're actually weighed. You actually put this, this thing on a scale and there's a minimum weight. It's located right here. On a steel rotor, we want to check for heat cracks and fissures coming out of the, on the surface. We're going to replace them when we see the heat fissures start to spread open to form cracks. If we know we're going to a high load braking track, we're going to want to change them sooner than, than later. Our final thing we want to know is what pad compound you have on it. The stock street pads work good for the average beginner. But as we get deeper into this, obviously we need to get a pad with a higher temperature range. We need something that's going to work at 140, 150 miles an hour. And we'll repeat lap after lap where it has stopping power. Um, so the last thing we wanna check is our caliper seals and guides. This car has got a fixed caliper, so it doesn't have any guides, but we're going to, we wanna check to make sure that the dust boot on the calipers hasn't been burnt off from extreme heat and that the seals are in good condition so that it will perform. The inspection should be done at least once a year. Next we have to take a look at the wheel and tire combo. We want to check the, the tread depth across the tread and these, these tread depth hole indicators. We want to see that it's fairly even. We want to make sure that you don't have any steel belts showing through or cords showing through so you still have enough rubber left across the entire width of the tire. You want to make sure you don't have a lot of excess rubber buildup on the rim like this. You know, make sure it's free all the way around. You want to make sure that your wheel weights are still intact and that they haven't fallen off due to the, uh, the extreme heat coming off of the brakes. You want to check, you, know, you want to make sure your wheels are clean. That way you'll, you'll see if there's any cracks visually showing through. You want to check it in you know, a number of spots. You want to make sure that the rim isn't bent all the way around. And remember to check your tire pressures after your session's on track to see what the hot pressures come out at. Finally, check the cooling system. 
make sure our level's good, make sure the coolant has been changed in a, at a reasonable time rent interval. And what we really want to check on the cooling system for a track day car, and even a car that just drives on the street and has been dri I haven't driven on the street quite a bit, is we want to check the front grill. We want to check that all the debris haven't clogged up the condenser and the radiator and are blocking all the air from getting to the radiator and condenser to let the car run at proper operating temperature. So in wrapping up, if you're going to take your car to the track, be sure to have it checked out before you do. So if we do have, that, that thing's just staring me in the face. You know, we can check, uh, we, obviously. Uh, the layman calls them shocks. That's a horrible name for them in the race car world. They're called dampers. <laughs> <laughs>